Every industry has secrets, and today I'm going to tell you about two of them that waterfowl ammo companies have been keeping under wraps. Hey, this is George with the New Hunter's Guide, the YouTube channel and podcast, helping new hunters get started and helping active hunters learn new things. And today I wanna blow the whistle on the dirty little secret of waterfowl ammunition. And also expose a second secret that's not quite as sinister, but no less surprising. Guys, you see what we're getting in the stores when we buy waterfowl ammunition is not what most of the ammo companies wanna lead us to believe that it is. It's not what the marketing tells us that it is. You see, the marketing makes you want to think that you're getting all these beautiful, perfectly sized spherical pellets with beautiful mirror finishes that fly perfectly through the air to your target, doing everything that we want them to be. And the truth is that's really not what's happening. That's not what we're buying. Guys, you see, the lead shot industry is much older than the waterfowl shot industry. They've been making lead shot for over 200 years. They've got the history, they've got the equipment, they've got manufacturing processes that are grounded and tried and true. Also, lead is a much better material in many ways to make ammunition out of. Lead is very malleable, you can polish it to a perfect finish, it's easy to work with it's easy to machine waterfowl ammo is a little bit different you see the waterfowl ammo industry is just a couple decades old versus centuries old they have not been around anywhere near as long steel of course the longest then bismuth then tungsten but what happens to make this ammunition is very different than what happens to make lead ammunition with lead ammunition you've got lines that are made and all sorts of things that go into place to to perfectly craft and machine and smooth and polish and everything and you've got this great process you can't just then take that same equipment change it and put a different material in and, and do the exact same thing with steel or bismuth or tungsten or tungsten blends. What happens to make that shot can be very different at times. One of the ways that your modern waterfowl ammunition is produced for some brands and some materials is they'll get a colander or a cauldron or some sort of container, fill it with the molten material, and then they will begin to pour that material into a big tank of water. And as the metal falls through the water, it becomes circle-ish. It becomes semi-spherical. And then it cools as it falls and it lands at the bottom. And then they bring it out and you have all of these random size and random shaped pellets. And then they sort of sort them by size-ish to get the different sizes that they're going to put into the shells. So you get this mix of stuff. It's number seven, number six, five, four, three, two, one, and some other random super shaped stuff that is just really odd looking. And they screen it and they filter it. And then you get the shot that you're getting. So often when you're buying waterfowl shot, you're not getting straight number four shot or straight number two shot. You're getting more of a blend. It's sort of like number five, four, three shot than just straight number four shot. Now that's not always true. Some brands are better than others, but too much of the time, guys, I have done well over 20, 30 different ballistics gel tests at this point. I've examined pellets that have never been shot. I've pulled pellets out of ballistics gel. And the things that I have seen have really led me to scratch my head on this. So when you're buying this shot, first of all, it is not always the size you think you're getting. It's often a blend of sizes marketed as one size. Or maybe it's 4.5 or 3.5 to, to two or two and a half. It's just, it's all different variations. But that's not the worst of it. The worst of it is that some of these pellets, guys, are really oddly shaped. They're not spherical. They're oblong, they're teardrop shaped, they're goofy looking shaped. 
all right? You're not often getting perfectly spherical pellets, and usually they're not perfectly round or mere finish. You often got sort of grainy, gritty stuff, all kinds of things that are going on on those pellets, and they are just not the picture-perfect little spheres that you might expect. Now, that's different with every material. Steel is the best. Steel is gonna be the most consistent, the most uniform, have the best finish most of the time. It's still not perfect. Then comes bismuth, then comes your tungsten alloys, and those can be, ooh. And then you've got straight TSS shot. Now, that can actually be pretty picture-perfect if they do it right and they take their time with it that can be really good but the the others man they can be rough let me show you some examples here all right here is one example where we've got two number four pellets yeah right okay the one is really right about a number four the other one i don't know that's more like small buckshot these were in the exact same shell all right here's another one two more number four pellets for you yeah one of them they are number four the other yeah i don't know what you would call that but it is definitely not a number four again that's more like triple b shot or small buck shot t shot maybe definitely not a number four all right and here's some here that are just goofy you've got these little growths on these ones okay i don't know what those are it's kind of like a mini pellet stuck to the other pellet but that was on most of them all right most of the pellets have these goofy little growths and then you've got other ones they're just not perfect they're not exactly what you want they're not perfectly round they're not perfectly polished and there's all kinds of them out there and this is just a tiny little sample of all the stuff that i have seen in this category now what i have found is that no material and no brand is immune all right that's just not the case now some brands are better than others and some brands are absolutely worse than others i'm not here today though to put any brands down or do anything like that but it is just not what you think it is and this leads me to the second secret but before we get to that i need to let you guys know that no one's sponsoring this video certainly no waterfowl ammo companies are sponsoring this video but you can support the channel by hitting the thumbs up button and if you like videos like this and field testing please go ahead and hit subscribe as well all right so the number two secret and as i said this one is a little less sinister but it is no less surprising i have fired everything that i've showed you pictures of and lots of other things all right i have put these things on paper i have put these things in ballistics gel and what i have found is that despite the fact that they're all different sizes, despite the fact that there's most certainly stratification happening when you shoot them and you get a longer shot string, despite the fact that they are just goofy looking shaped pellets that are the wrong size, that are strange shapes, that have goofy growth sticking out of them, they all performed well. That's right, every one of these pellets had good patterns. They are all 70, 80, 90% pattern density. That's 80, 90% of the pellets that were in the shell made it to the paper in a 30 inch circle at 40 yards. All of them were acceptable, ideal, or ridiculously high pattern density. So they flew through the air quite well. The second part, all of them penetrated well in the ballistics gel. None of them, based on their shape, had any worse penetration than the others. In fact, some of the goofiest ones that I just showed you that were the craziest, large, misshapen, who knows what they were, I pulled those out of the ballistics gel, which means they hit a duck-sized target at 40 yards. So, you know, on one hand, you've got this secret that the ammo is kind of... It is imperfect and irregular and not what you think it's supposed to be. But the second part is, it doesn't really matter. Take this for example. Winchester came out not long ago with their blindside ammunition. Hexagon, goofy shaped pellets. And then the blindside too, which is the same hexagons, but played it in a little bit better. 
And this ammo, guys, despite being hexagon, despite being strange, despite being just contrary to everything you might think, it actually still performs pretty well. It is just as good or better as most of the other steel shot that I have tested. All right, it's like, I would love to have been at the board meeting for that one, and somebody was like, I got it, guys. Let's make shotgun ammo for duck hunting that's hexagon shaped. All these people in ammo companies make it seem like you actually need rounded ammunition. We'll show them why they think they're getting rounded ammunition right now anyway. We'll show them that even hexagons will do the job well enough, if not better than some of the other spherical ammo. It's almost like they were making sort of a commentary or a joke on the entire industry as a whole. But the bottom line is they perform reasonably well, just as good as a lot of this other goofy shaped stuff that you've seen here. So what is the bottom line? Which brands are the best? Well, guys, the answer to that is you need to test and examine your ammo because some shells or some lots are better than others. You could get one case of a particular shell from one brand last season and the pellets are really nice and uniform and they fly good and the shapes are nice and then you could buy another case next season and have a different lot and different quality and different pellet shape and different everything. And you think, well, this brand sucks because these pellets were irregular. Yeah, well, they still shot good, flew perfectly, went in the gel just as deep as the regular ones and performed just as well. So does that matter? Not as much as you might think. So the bottom line, guys, is test your ammunition. And speaking of testing, here's a test video right here. Here's another test video where I took a lot of the most popular shells on the market, put them on paper, put them in ballistics gel to see how they compared. Guys, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, God bless you and go get them in the woods.